actually remove these because I hate the blue reflection from the window when I'm wearing them. These are my new um, blue light glasses. A bunch of you recommended that I get a pair because I read off electronic devices and a lot of you said that you had problems with your eyesight um, after reading so much on your phones and iPads and Kindles and stuff like that. So you said to me, bitch, go get yourself some blue light reading glasses before you damage your eyes. So that's what I did. They're real fucking cute, okay? They got like this tortoise shell thing going on. They're from Key Australia. Love it. So we're doing another reading vlog. It's currently Sunday. I'm gonna be filming this over today and tomorrow, which will be Monday. I asked you guys on Instagram what book you wanted me to read in this video. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's just Makeup Mary and you totally need to come over and just hang out with me. I chat to you guys all the time over there. A lot of you were recommending the same books and there was two books that kept coming up. One was Bad Saint by Monica James and the other one was It Ain't Me Babe, I think it is, by Tilly Cole. So many people suggest to me all the time to read Bad Saint and I definitely want to read that, but... It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole 1. So I actually started it last night. Let me just give you a little bit of a rundown of my thoughts already. I don't believe I'm very far in. Uh, yeah, so I'm only 15% in. I've got 6 hours and 49 minutes of reading to do. You guys know I love uh, mafia related books. Anything kind of crime based. Bikey gangs, gangs in general. Things like that. I'm all about the criminal life. Organized crime. I love it when it comes to romances. I've said it so many times before. It gives you more than just a romance. It's dark, twisted, taboo a lot of the time. Which is what I thoroughly enjoy when it comes to reading. So I'm really excited to go with It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. Because apparently it's meant to be super dark, super twisted. Um, from what I've read already... It has a lot to do with a cult, uh, which is something I've never really come across in a romance. I haven't come across a romance read yet that has heavy, like, religion involved or cults or anything like that. So this is going to be something different and something cool for me. The main dude in this book is the president of the motorcycle club that he is obviously a part of. The dude, when he's a kid, um, ends up going to with his dad to drop off a dead body and... <laughs> His dad hops out of the car and is like, wait here, mate. I'm, I'll be back in a minute. His dad ends up going and doing what he needs to do. And then he kind of like goes through the woods or the forest, wherever he is, and just like explores. He comes across this like kind of, it looks kind of like a prison um, that's like heavily fenced with like barbed wire and stuff. And he sees this girl who's like a couple years younger than him behind the fence who's like dressed like, uh, like an Amish person. And she's like bawling her eyes out. And the main dude in this book is actually mute. He doesn't speak. They have this little encounter when they first meet. He like um, reaches over and like brushes her knuckles with his thumb and she is like blushing um, and he's like speaking to her, which is a shock because there's only two people in his life that he can talk to, his best friend and his dad. But so, for some reason, he's able to actually talk to this girl and he's like asking her like, what is this place? Um, where are you from? What's your name? And she's like not really giving him anything. Um, they end up like scooting closer together at the fence and then he like leans in and kisses her and then she freaks the fuck out and she like um, crawls back to the tree and starts like rocking back and forth and repeating like that she has sinned and that she's sorry to God and all this kind of shit. His dad ends up calling for him to come back to the car and then they don't see each other for like 15 years and then 15 years later... Uh, she ends up escaping from the occult and ends up at his like MC club almost pretty much dead because a dog mauled her and all this shit happened and now I've gotten up to the bit in the book where she's hooked up on like antibiotics and IVs and stuff and he has just figured out that this chick is the same chick that he kissed and met 15 years ago. I don't know what it's going to do with the whole cult thing. I get really uncomfortable when it comes to anything religious or like um, to do with cults or anything like that. I just, it creeps me the fuck out. Like I'm totally like, if you're a religious person, like no judgment, hun. Like I'm not a judgy person. You can believe in whatever you want to believe. You can practice whatever religion you want to practice. Personally for me, not about that life. Um... Really, religion makes me feel kind of uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just totally think that if you believe in something, that is your choice. But I think it's such a personal thing. And I don't like how people can be, like, judged upon the religion that they practice. 
And I feel like as soon as you name something a religion, it like changes people's perspective. And I just think that's wrong. But anyway, I'm rambling about something that's not even relevant. I'm not religious or anything like that. But I have my own beliefs. Like, I believe in reincarnation, mate. 100%. Um, I don't believe in like heaven and hell and stuff like that, but I believe re in reincarnation and I believe that I've been here many, many times. I feel like this is my fourth lap around the world. Anyway, I'm going to continue my day and read this book. I don't know. I don't know. It's a little bit of a complex book to put in a reading vlog. I'm just going to keep reading it and see what happens and check in with you guys throughout the day. I'm only like 18% in now, so I've read like 2% since I started this video and I just need it. I just need to fucking have a conversation right now. Like, so it just did like a flashback to what happened to the girl before she escaped the cult. Um, it showed what made her run away. And I just need to say right now, this is making me think of anyone that is involved in a cult or has been in their life. It honestly just wigs me the fuck out how anyone can believe this type of shit. Her friend was trying to stop her from running and she was like, if they see you, please lie for me. Tell them like, you don't know where I am. And her friend was like, I can't do that. That's a sin. I will go to hell. Um... What the fuck? I could never be manipulated like that. My mind is just way too fucking caught on to shit. She's just fucking woken up at the bikey club and there is like some dude there. I think he's like a doctor and he's wearing like obviously he's like leather cut because he's a part of the bikey gang and he's like got a beard and shit like that and she's seen the beard and she's like oh my god he has a beard just like the dudes in the cult. He must be a part of the cult. And she's like freaking out. And I, th it's just fucking bizarre. It's just so fucking bizarre. Like I can't even deal. And she's like obviously hooked up to an IV or like antibiotics or something like that. So she's like woken up and she's looked at her arm and she's seen it like obviously attached to her vein. And she's just like ripped it out. So there's like blood everywhere. And she doesn't even know what it is. She's like there's this strange thing in my arm. There's this strange bit of metal in my arm that's connected to a clear bag with liquid in it. Imagine being a part of a cult, being raised in it, so you know no different, and then coming out into the real world. Wouldn't your brain just be completely fucked and abused? Like, imagine the issues, hun. Therapy would be needed. Anyway, I'm gonna keep reading because this is just, this is, I feel like this is gonna be super deep. I know that this is like a series. There's got like, there's like seven books or something ridiculous, I think, or like five books. I don't know if I'm gonna read them all. We'll see how this one goes. I just hope the romance is real fucking good, okay? I'll update you in a little bit. You guys, I'm 30% in and I'm obsessed. She's figured out that this dude is the same dude that she had her first and only kiss with like 15 years ago. And there's like an instant connection between them. Like she doesn't understand life um, outside of the cult. Obviously she was raised in a cult. She has been manipulated and her mind has been filled with so much crap. She didn't even know like what a motorbike was. Imagine fucking waking up from being like knocked out for days. You've just uh, escaped a cult and you wake up at a fucking bikey gang club surrounded by bikey gang members and they're like asking you questions and they're asking like, do you know what a motorbike is? And you're like, nah, sorry, I don't. And she knows that he sins. She's gathered that he's a bit of a sinner, and he is. Like, he is an uh, MC president, so, you know, guns, drugs, sluts, fucking all that bullshit, right? But she also feels, like, super safe, and she feels, like, protected around him and, and like, comfortable. I'm loving the whole, like, bikey gang aspect, too. Like, all the members of the club and stuff like that. I really love Gianna Darling's Fallen Men series, so I'm getting those type of vibes from this book but it's not it's a lot deeper and darker obviously she, she was given a different name as well by the prophet like the the fucking dude the fucking dude that runs the cult too she's too tempting her name represents how tempting she is for other men fucking bizarre i'm just gonna drink more of my coffee now i love drinking my iced coffee in like this glass with a metal straw because it makes it taste 
really yummy like even more yummier than if you were to drink it straight out of the bottle my favorite iced coffee is dare the green one don't give me the fucking brown one hun i'm not about the brown one see you soon oh my god i have to redo this bit so may and biker fucking prez just had their first like sexual situation go down he was like fingering her <laughs> up against the tree and she like freaked out or whatever and like pushed him away it says here why am i so wet between my legs why did i ache there why was everything on the outside world so hard to understand these new feelings impossible to to decipher a lump clogged my throat but i fought back the tears bitch don't cry hun if you've got some man's fucking hand down your pants and you're not feeling it He's not doing it right. You know what I'm saying? May and Sticks or... Uh, I think his name's Sticks or it's... Stikes. I think it's Sticks, personally. They're, like, together now. They are... You Are you ready for it? Everything and more. There was a little... There's been, like, a... Whoa, look at the difference. <laughs> there was a little bit of a love triangle for a minute there and I was real down with it. She grew real close with Ryder because apparently Ryder was a um, religious person too until he joined the bike again. Oh, I better shut that so you don't hear my washing machine. But as she grew closer to him, he obviously started gaining feelings for her, right? Which is like, what happens? And obviously Six didn't really like that because it's like his old lady and he's like obsessed with her. But like, she does dumb things. Like she went and saw Ryder in his bedroom while he was naked and was like declaring how much she loved him in a friendship way and he like Ryder was saying like but I love you like I want to be with you I want to have the same life as you like Styx is not that man he's the like president of the MC like he can't be what he needs to be for you and he's like I will give up the club I will give up everything just to be with you and if you can't give me that then I'm leaving and she's like no but I can't I can't have you go bitch you can't have the best of both worlds. And when Styx like comes home from like doing business or whatever, comes back to the club, and those two are like in the bedroom together and Ryder's fucking naked, like he flips his shit, obviously, which is validated. And it's so annoying because she's like crying and she's like, don't hurt him. While well, like Styx has a gun down fucking Ryder's throat. But it's like, um, you literally let his mate and one of the members of the club fucking hook up with you. And you think Styx is not going to hurt him? Like, and then she's like, why would you do that? Like, he beats him up. And then she's like, why would you do that to him? And Styx is like, um, you're mine, bitch. He was, like, crossing way too many lines. Kind of like the Edward Jacob thing with, like, Twilight. Bitch, you can't be, like, hanging out with your boy best friend that you think is just your best friend. But he really like secretly fucking loves you and wants to fuck the shit out of you and think that your partner, boyfriend, whoever you're fucking is going to be okay with that. Like, that's just not how it works. You wouldn't like it, hun. You wouldn't like it if your boy had a girl best friend and that girl best friend was in love with him and wanted to fuck him and he was hanging out with him all the time. I wouldn't. I'd be like, hun, and back the fuck up. Not your property, bitch. So don't act all like surprised when he um, and like sad and like you're a horrible person when fucking your your boy gets fucking angry and tries to kill him. Anyway, this gives me like the Fallen Men series vibe as well as like Sons of Anarchy, <laughs> and I loved Sons of Anarchy. Like honestly, bitch, Jax Teller was fucking everything and more. I literally just watched it for him. I was like, I don't give a fuck about anyone else. Jax Teller, hun, you are everything and more. Mmm, fucking loved that show. Um, I also loved his mother in the show. What was her name? Gemma? Gemma. I think it was Gemma. Frothed that bitch. One minute I hated her, the next, next minute I loved her. And I was like, you and me, soul sisters, hun. Literally what I would be like if I was in like a gang and I was someone's old lady. Love, I love, like a boss bitches right i just love it bitches that are just like you know aggressive not even aggressive but just like you know fuck around with Gemma was one of those i loved how like she would submit to her partner but then like behind the scenes she'd like smack a bitch like yes that is me
Good morning, everyone. So I finished It Ain't Me last night, hon, and I have some feelings about it. I get questions all the time where I read all my books. So I'll say it again. I've said it so many times. I read on the Kindle um, reading app or Apple Books. I really fucking enjoyed that book. I rated it on Goodreads four stars out of five. If you're into romances that have, you know, a more darker plot, deeper storyline, involves organized crime, mobs, gangs, bikey gangs and stuff, you're going to really fucking love this book. I love it so much. I'm actually really excited to read the next two. I don't know if I'll read the whole series, but I definitely am going to read the next two. The next two books after this are about two of the characters that were mentioned in It Ain't Me, Babe. Oh, I just loved it. I loved May and Stinks. I just, oh, Sticks, Stinks, whatever you want to call it. Sticks, Stikes, whatever you want to name him. Loved their relationship. Did get a little bit creeped out with the cult stuff, I'm not going to lie. So if you have any triggers when it comes to like uh, cults and stuff like that, this is not your book because it explains a lot of it in the book. Some stuff that was spoken about in the book i was just like what the fuck like i couldn't wrap my head around it but yeah i really loved it was it my favorite book of all time no but it definitely gave me feels and it definitely consumed me and brought me into their world and that's what i look for in every book the sex wasn't too crazy in the book um there was a couple of real steamy scenes but it wasn't too like full on i recently read like a penelope sky book and i'm not even kidding the whole book was them just fucking and it was just repetitive. Like, if you're going to do sex, do it fucking good. Don't be repetitive with your sex. It's really annoying. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this reading vlog, let me know and I'll do more of them. Before leaving, thumbs it up. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll leave my most recent videos here on the screen right now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.